But a man who has asked us joins us right now, unpacking the question, thinking ahead with air travel, the senior editor of Newsmax magazine, Dave Padden. David, we're glad to have you here. Good to be with you, David. And uh, this is one of those stories. It's not speculation. It's informed uh, deductive reasoning Absolutely. based on what we're seeing in the headlines. As you foresee the future of air travel, with so many people getting on planes for the weekend right now, what are you seeing long term? Well, we know for sure, J.D., this is going to have huge impact on air travel. A lot of it will be behind the scenes. Passengers may not see it. But one aviation law attorney I spoke with yesterday called this a turning point in the history of aviation. That's how big a deal this could be. And we've seen this before uh, in aviation. In December of 2001, uh, Richard Reed, the shoe bomber, he tries to pull that stunt. After that, everybody's got to take their shoes off, put them through the scanners. In 2006, there was the transatlantic plot that involved smuggling explosive liquids on board an aircraft, actually many aircraft, and then blowing them up. After that, you could only have 3.4 ounces, as we all know, of any liquid that you could bring on board. So this event, regardless of how it ultimately turns out in terms of the cause, will have some tremendous impacts in aviation. And you have some areas that you think uh, oh. are going to make the difference, right? Absolutely. Let's take a look. First of all, and this is something really nobody's talking about, detachable black boxes. We know about the black box. The problem is, obviously, it goes down to the bottom of the ocean along with the rest of the aircraft. But there is a technology, in fact, uh, we have it now on some of our fighter aircraft, where those black boxes automatically detach, uh, they inflate, uh, and they float to the surface, sets off a beacon, and at that point, obviously, you can find it. So I think there's going to be a push to see something like that, if only to limit liability. Another thing we're going to see, universal document checks, or at least more universal. You know, right now, a lot of people are just amazed at this. Only the United States, the United Kingdom, the United Arab Emirates, the only three countries in the world that systematically uh, check out um, all of these documents to make sure there are no forgeries, no passport forgeries. It's going to be a tremendous uh, pressure on the nations of the world to get more systematic. So I think people can look for that. I think that'll be a welcome change. Another big change that we're going to be seeing, uh, transponder uplinks. Now, you've probably heard people say, well, let's just do a live feed of all the black box information up to the satellite. So wherever these aircrafts go, uh, that we'll be able to know what's going on. But there's a problem with that. Imagine, J.D., how much data you're talking about, and they're monitoring all these critical systems, streaming it continuously up to a satellite. Well, I just flash back to the times I've taken a look at air traffic control monitors and looked at it for, for the illusion of being in the wide open skies. When you actually, in real time, take a look at what air traffic controllers are dealing with, and exponentially all the data pouring into a central system. I just wonder, I know we've made great strides mm. with computing, but mm. that, that's a whole lot of information, David. If we can't get health care gov oh, uh, to well, stay on the air, Well, of course, that's we Washington that? and some private vendors. Uh, uh, that saga continues. But, but with Here's this situation, an alternative what idea. do you think is going to work? What we do is instead of streaming all the black box data, we stream the transponder data. And that's the essential GPS data that you need to later go back and know what happened to that flight and where to look if anything goes wrong. So the idea is just stream the transponder uh, data. Obviously, one question is how do you keep the pilots from turning off those transponders? Been a lot of discussion about that. The pilots I've spoken with say it's a really, really bad idea to rig those transponders so you can never turn them off. Uh, for example, what if one of them shorted out, you started to have maybe a fire, you want to get to that piece of equipment and deactivate it. So it remains to be seen whether that will happen, but look for those transponder uplinks. Another big, uh, big one, greater cargo restrictions. On this aircraft, uh, Malaysia 370, we now know that there were 500 pounds of highly flammable lithium ion batteries. These have been shown to take aircraft out of the sky previously in previous accidents. The, the flammability or the volatility of those batteries, uh, I don't know if there's a way to transport them safely, but obviously the concern now, David, has to be, given the past experience and the, the fact that these batteries are extremely combustible, uh, 
it seems like they're going to have to head for some sort of restrictions. I don't know if they just end up shipped uh, via maritime uh, internationally in the Merchant Marine, but uh, do you think they'll be taken completely off airplanes? They already have taken them off of passenger airlines in the United States. They probably need to take them not only off of all the passenger airlines, but also all the cargo airlines. They're just too dangerous. Uh, one pilot told me yesterday, he said, how many cargo pilots do we have to kill before we realize this cargo is just too dangerous. So that's uh, frightening to think that that was on that aircraft. A couple of other things real quick. Gre greater scrutiny of pilots. We're talking about psych exams, possibly continual psych exams, repetitive. Another big, and by the way, the pilots union is not too happy with that idea, but what really has the pilots unions upset, video monitoring. What about putting an actual camera in that cockpit? You have them in buses, you have them in trains, why not in aircraft? And uh, they're not at all happy. They say that's intrusive into the, work, the workplace. And last and not least, alternative cockpit access. They've hardened these cockpits so much that if the pilot says to the co-pilot, you go out and use the restroom, because I'll, I'll use it later. And he goes out and they flip a switch. There's no getting back in that cockpit. And we had a situation a short time ago That's where correct. that exactly happened, where one member of the flight crew basically sabotaged the other to hijack uh, an airliner. So you, there has to be some sort of uh, means to get back in that cockpit. We're looking at some massive changes. Again, a lot of them behind the scenes. One of the changes, for better or for worse, is probably going to be all too evident to passengers. And that's what's going to happen when they see that ticket price. Some of these changes they're talking about uh, could be upwards of five, six, seven hundred million dollars. Somebody's going to have to pay for oh, it. Oh, mercy. And you mean when I'm buying those tickets, as I look for discount air travel for my family, I'm going to be shelling out some more dough. Well, when you get everybody there safely, that's the key. That's Dave the key. Patton, we really do appreciate Thanks your input changing. on this important story. When we return, trading in a seat in Congress for a seat behind the microphone. Some of us do it out of necessity after finishing second in an election, but Mike Rogers elects to make that transition voluntarily. We'll speak live with the House Intelligence Committee Chairman when we come back. And of course, we'd love you to speak to us. You can do it via social media. You can tweet us your comments at Newsmax TV, hashtag America's Forum, or visit us at facebook.com backslash Newsmax. And email is always welcome. Our address is connect at NewsmaxTV.com. Again, don't forget, Congressman Mike Rogers.